Okay, we've been talking about voltaic cells and kind of the uh, the potential difference that we can get between these two electrodes and then how we can utilize that potential difference to do something, to do work. And if we wanted to figure out how much work we can do, the maximum amount of work that we can do, the W max here, then that is going to be equal to the, um, the negative NF E sub cell. So what does that mean? Well, we talked about E sub cell before. That's our cell potential, and we calculate that by taking the uh, the sum of the uh, electrode potential of our anode plus our electrode potential of our cathode. So that gives us the total cell potential, kind of depending on what's being oxidized, what's being reduced. So that's going to be specific to two specific metals. F is a constant. It's Faraday's constant. Um, this comes from Michael Faraday. Uh, who's an incredibly important chemist. Uh, Faraday cage fame. Uh, if you've heard of Faraday cages, they're the reason that airplanes can get struck by lightning, but the people inside don't get struck by lightning. Um, your microwave ovens are also kind of essentially a Faraday cage. So uh, Faraday was really into electricity and kind of he was the one who played around with chemical batteries to start off with by putting uh, different metals in salt water and joining them together and being able to form an electric current. Um, so kind of the modern battery that we have is thanks to him. So this is Faraday's constant. Um, it's 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons so coulomb is the charge um, that's our unit for measuring charge and um, per mole of electron is going to be important because our n value here is the number of moles of electrons that are transferred kind of in the redox process So that's kind of where this falls, why this falls where it falls uh, in our electrochemistry chapter, because our redox reactions are going to be showing this movement of electrons. Some things are being lost, some things are being gained, kind of depending on the reaction, and um, that's going to factor in how much uh, work, how much energy we can get out of this. And the work then is going to be um, in, in joules, um, because your energy unit here joules is equal to a coulomb volt so if we think about kind of our different units our cell potential is in volts faraday's constant is in coulombs per mole of electron n is in moles of electrons so when we multiply them across the moles of electrons will divide out and we'll be left with a coulomb volt and remember that a joule is equal to a coulomb volt so that will give us a maximum work in joules so let's look at a sample calculation for that um, let's look at this guy. What is the maximum amount of electrical work that can be obtained from this many grams of zinc? And we're in this cell, so this is our zinc copper cell, which again is a really common one, so you've seen this in a lot of examples so far. And the um, cell potential for this cell, which we've calculated in prior videos, is 1.10 volts. So my reaction here, my overall reaction is going to look like this. So we have our zinc and our copper 2 plus. Gives me my zinc 2 plus and my copper metal. So the metal solids here are my metal electrodes. These ions and their ions in solution in my half cells. And we know that our W max is equal to the negative N F. E sub cell. So there's things that we already know. Um, F, of course, we know because it's a constant. N, we know because it is a redox process. E sub cell, we were given. Look at all this. We have so much information. So here's our E sub cell. Our F is a constant. And I'm not sure why this notation, I see this in a lot of books, kind of the why do I write it in scientific notation and not just 96,000. 485. Um, uh, you know, we like scientific notation scientists. Now, N is the number of electrons, number of moles of electrons that we're transferring. So uh, zinc is going from zinc to zinc 2 plus, so it's losing two electrons in order to do that. And copper 2 is going from copper 2 to copper that is neutral, so it's gaining two electrons there. So the number of moles of electrons transferred is 2. Okay. So here's kind of all of my pieces to this, and it's relating back to our 
our redox type chemistry. And so if I plug in my values here for these numbers that were given, then I end up with a W max that is equal to, I got this number, two, two, six, seven. This would be in joules or Coulomb volts. Now, if we're thinking about significant figures, which we always are, then it looks like I'm going to be limited to my three here. So this would be negative 2.12 times 10 to the fifth, two, three, four, five, yep, joules. All right, so that's the maximum work for this cell. That would be if I had, you know, one mole of each of these components, because that's my standard amount. That's what's true for my standard cells. This is for one mole of our reactants and products. Um, but we don't have one mole. We have 6.54 grams of zinc. So we have to factor that in. So we have to go 6.54 grams of zinc. And the first step when we're trying to think about anything and we're given a value in grams, we should be trained by this point to convert directly to moles. So if we go 65.38 grams, this is coming from the periodic table for my molar mass of zinc. Then I can say for every one mole of zinc, this is the maximum amount of work that I have. And, and we've seen problems like this before with different thermodynamic kind of quantities, thinking about energy and how much energy comes out of a reaction, the heats of reactions we can also solve in this way. Let's turn to the fifth, joules. And then when I plug and chug through here, then I end up with this value, 2.12 times 10 to the fourth. And again, my grams, my moles, I'm left with an answer in joules. So this many joules for my 6.54 grams of zinc. Okay, now what does it mean for this thing to be negative? Well, um, if we're thinking about work that's being done, right, a negative value means that it's something done from the surrounding or from the system into the surroundings, right? So it's being kind of energy that's put out into the surroundings. So we can kind of think about this as work being done by the system to the surroundings. And this is the amount of energy we'd get out of that many grams of zinc. Now, um, it's even more interesting, I think, for thinking about the chemistry and we're getting into how this relates to spontaneity because the spontaneity of a reaction is going to be related to the maximum work because we defined our Gibbs free energy before is the maximum amount of work that we can do. So if uh, Gibbs free energy is the maximum work and the maximum work is my um, is my negative N F E sub cell, then we should be able to calculate Gibbs free energy for any of these redox processes. Now I'm going to focus in my dot cam a little bit more. It's a little bit fuzzy, so I'm going to focus in. There we go. That's a little better. All right. So now we can calculate the standard free energy for this process. So if we look at um, my tin here, my tin is going from tin 2 plus to tin 4 plus, and my mercury is going from mercury 2 plus to diatomic mercury 2 plus. So mercury is one of those weird ones that can be diatomic in its ionic form. And so we have this exchange of electrons where tin is losing electrons, it is being oxidized, right? So if we think about our half reactions here, and we want to balance out our net charges, then we have to add two electrons to this side to get a net plus two on either side. So here's my oxidation step because I'm losing electrons. And my reduction step then is my mercury. I have two of them with this two plus charge going to one diatomic mercury with a two plus charge. So two times my two plus gives me a plus four. So I need to add two electrons over here in order to balance that out with the plus two on the other side. So that's my reduction step. Now, if I go to my standard table of reduction potentials, so if I look at my reduction potential, potential, then I can find this guy as written, and this is given as uh, 0.90 volts for that particular reduction reaction. 
And the opposite of this, right, if I was wrote this in the other direction, then I could find it in my reduction potentials, because right now it's oxidation. So if I looked up the opposite reaction of this, it would give me 0.15 volts. But because this is the oxidation step, I have to take the opposite sign to that. Okay, so when I look it up in the reduction potential, it is uh, positive. 0.15, but I'm making it a negative value because it is the oxidation um, or the reducing agent in this particular reaction. Okay, so these are important because this is going to give me my E sub cell for this, and I'm trying to calculate the standard free energy. So what I'm looking for is my delta G. I have my N. My N is my number of moles that I'm transferring of my electrons, so that's 2. I know my Faraday constant because it's a constant. Coulombs per mole of electron. And then my E sub cell is gonna be the, uh, the sum of my electrode potentials. So the uh, potential of my anode plus my potential of my cathode. Anode cathode. And remember by convention the anode is the one that's undergoing oxidation, so that would be my tin in this case, and the cathode is the one that's undergoing reduction, which would be my mercury. So that gives me a, an E sub cell of 0.75 volts. Now these are standards, so I've been kind of a little bit loosey-goosey with my my degree symbols here, but they are under standard conditions, so we should report them as such. And so now we're looking for delta G is equal to negative 2 moles of electrons times Faraday's constant. Electrons, which when I multiply those together, that will give me a value in coulombs. And then times my cell potential. Okay, so this setup is going to give me an answer in Coulomb volts, which we know is equivalent to a joule. And so when I plug and chug through here, then I end up with negative 1.4 times 10 to the fifth joules, or Coulomb volts. Now it's negative because there's nothing in here, right? My cell potential here is positive. Uh, Faraday's constant is positive. It's a positive number of moles of electrons. I'm never going to have a negative number of moles of electrons that are transferred. And then this is a negative value by virtue of the equation. So this gives me a delta G that's negative. Well, what does that mean? A negative delta G means that it's a spontaneous process. If I set this up and I had a cell potential because of the way that I set it up that is negative, that would make the overall process positive. And if I have a positive delta G, that means it's non-spontaneous. So I would have to do something to the system in order to make that happen. But this would be a spontaneous reaction. So now I can start to predict which one of these metals is going to make the best battery, right? And it's going to be the ones that have um, high values for their cell potential, and they have to be um, high positive values, right? So that's going to be an important piece to this. If I have a high negative value for that, that means that it's going to be highly non-spontaneous, which is less interesting when I'm trying to use the battery to power something else. So this is just another way that we can utilize this information to give us um, to give us a way to use these equations to way to tune our batteries and to make better materials.